Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instruction on completing the task at hand. Visit my YouTube channel and watch my disclaimer video. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find the information you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to troubleshoot a misfire code on a motor as uh, briefly as I can and as detailed as I can. Now for a car motor to run and run smoothly, it has to have all of its cylinders working properly and uh, it needs five basic things for a car to run properly. Number one, it needs fuel. Number two, it needs air. Number three, it needs spark. Number four, it needs compression. And number five, it needs timing. Well, if your car is missing any one of those five ingredients for any of the cylinders, it'll misfire and won't run smooth. Most of the time, if you got a misfire code or a car misfiring, you could tell because the motor's shaking. I don't know if you can see this one here, but the motor is rocking, and that's because one of the cylinders is not firing. Now, the car that I'm doing this check on has been sitting for a little while, and it has a few issues, probably because they've mounted up and it's been sitting. And as you can see, the motor's running, the car is shaking at idle, and it has several lights, one of which is a check engine light. So, when I scan and check the codes, it says P302, which is a misfire on cylinder number two. Now, these are the tools you need to properly diagnose a misfire. You need a tools to pull the spark plugs, which is your 5 8 inch ratchet, and your extensions to get down in the wells. Whatever tools you need to pull the cover off the spark plugs, a compression gauge, a magnet to pull the spark plugs out of the deep wells, and you need a code reader to read the code so when you reset it and check it again and reset it and check it again. You should also have a spark plug gap gauge with you so you can check the gap on the spark plugs. Uh, there's a few different things that can make a car misfire and not have its spark or not have its fuel. So we're going to go through these things uh, one at a time. Now, in general, if you have a single cylinder misfire like this car has, you need to troubleshoot that one cylinder. If you have a multi-cylinder misfire, you need to look at the possibilities that cause multiple misfires. Like this car is a five-cylinder engine. A multiple misfire would mean that it has a general code P0300 for a misfire, and then it may say misfire number one, misfire number two, and on and on. All five cylinders misfiring. But this car only has one code and one cylinder misfiring, so we just need to diagnose why that one cylinder is misfiring. Now there's a couple things that will cause a multiple misfire. Low fuel pressure will cause multiple misfire. Either you run out of gas or your fuel pump is not pumping the proper pressure. If you have a electronic problem, like some kind of relays going bad and not causing the fuel injectors to fire, that could cause a multiple misfire. If your mass airflow sensor or your map sensor is going bad and it's not letting the engine get the proper amount of uh, air, that can cause a multiple misfire. If you have some kind of coil issue that, uh, like the ignition coil is going bad, it may cause all of your spark plugs not to fire right. That'll cause a multiple misfire. At any rate, if you got a multiple misfire, you're looking at a general uh, common problem. If you have a cylinder misfire, you need to focus on that one cylinder. So, if you got a multiple misfire, check your air filter, check your mass flow sensor. But if the mass flow sensor is bad, you'll normally get a code for that. Check your fuel pressure. Some cars have a fuel pressure uh, straighter valve that you could check fuel pressure on or you could check your relay. You want to check things that are common or a fuel pump to see why you got a multiple cylinder misfire. Now if you got a single cylinder misfire you need to go through these troubleshooting steps that we're about to go to. Now your first suspect of a single cylinder misfire is a bad spark plug. If you haven't changed your spark plugs as outlined in your owner's manual Go ahead and 
arrange to get those spark plugs changed or change them yourself. Okay, so the first step I want to do is check the spark plugs, see if they look serviceable, and check, make sure it's getting spark. So you want to find the spark plugs. Normally it has a cover covering it, either a whole engine cover or a cover like this. So I'm going to pull that cover. I'm going to check spark plug number one and two so I can compare them. Let me go ahead, remove these six screws, access the spark plugs, and pull the spark plugs out. Okay, I got both of these spark plugs out. One from the number one cylinder and one from the number two cylinder. The one in the number one cylinder is a platinum plug, and it has a gap there at the tip. That gap should be 0.28 in this car. You need to figure out what that gap is on your car. Make sure it's correct. When I look at the next plug, it looks like it's been replaced. It's a different type of plug, so somebody's been in here trying to figure out what the problem is. And it, if you look at the tip of it, let me stop shaking here. The tip of it looks oily. That is normally the sign of unburnt fuel. You can verify that by looking at websites and seeing what the different spark plugs look like under certain conditions. You can also smell it to see if it smells like unburnt fuel. Okay, so my number one spark plug looks dry and it had ash on it as if it's been firing. The number two plug looks wet like it hasn't been firing, which is a bad sign. So I may not be sparking in that number two cylinder. If that's the case, I may have a problem with my cap and rotor, which is over there. So I could check my cap and rotor or I may have some other problems. So I'm going to check to see if that uh, spark plug is firing. I could swap them out, or I could just check to see if it's firing. Uh, but one does look different than the other because somebody's replaced it. So let me see if that spark plug is firing. There's a couple different ways to see if the spark plug is firing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the fuel injector for that cylinder so that fuel's not spraying in there. And I'm going to start the motor and come out here and look at the tip of this spark plug to see if it's throwing an arc in that plug. Now you could check the gap with the gap gauge, make sure the gap is proper. You could brush and dry the spark plug off so that it fires better, but that's how I'm gonna see if this spark plug is sparking. Now you don't wanna start the motor with the spark plug out and have fuel spraying in that cylinder because fuel will spray out and you'll start a fire. Okay, I disconnected the fuel injector for that cylinder. I have the spark plug laying across the motor. I'm going to start it and see if a uh, spark jumps in that plug. Okay, I can see the spark jumping on that spark plug, so I know the spark plug is firing. Okay, if you have a coil pack that connects your spark plug, you can do the test the same way. Unbolt the coil pack from the motor, leave the spark plug in it, start the car with no fuel on that cylinder, and see if that spark is jumping. Alright, if you check for spark and you have coil packs and you have no spark, I recommend that you swap coil packs from one cylinder to another and then try and see if you get spark if you swap the coil packs. Normally, if you get a bad coil pack, you will get spark after swapping the coil packs. You can swap it and do the test like this, or you can swap them and drive the car and see if the misfire moves to another cylinder. Okay, since I got spark, I know that my ignition system is likely good, and I either have a fuel problem or more than likely a compression problem on this cylinder. So... I got a video linked here how to check for fuel. So check that link out. But since I had fuel on that spark plug and it was wet, I'm pretty sure I had fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip over that part. Like I said, look at the link down under the video and I'm going to check compression. So, so far I'm pretty sure I have fuel. I'm pretty sure I have spark. Now I'm checking compression. If a car didn't have compression, it won't fire right and it'll misfire. Now, I like to check compression on two cylinders so I can compare the two. Now, there's a couple things you want to look for when comp uh, checking compression. One 
is very low compression numbers, which means that you have a burnt valve, normally uh, 30 PSI or less. And number two, you want to look for compression that's too low for it to fire, which is normally between 60 and 120. This motor should have compression between 156 and 186, so you need to check the specifications for your car to make sure it has the right compression. So what you do is you remove the spark plugs and you screw your compression gauge down in the spark plug hole. Be careful you don't cross thread it. Next thing you want to do is disconnect your fuel source and disconnect your ignition source so that your spark plugs are not firing and your fuel's not spraying. I normally pull the fuel relay or the fuel pump fuse and then I disconnect one of the wires off the ignition coil or just unplug your ignition coils if you have a car that has the ignition coil. Okay, I pulled my fuse that said fuel pump and ignition coil. I have my compression gauge screwed down in there. Now I'm gonna crank the motor until I hear it crank eight revolutions. Then I'm gonna come and see what pressure's on my gauge. Right now, the pressure on my gauge is zero. If you have a weak battery, you want to use a jumper box to do this, but you want to crank it so that you hear eight cranks. All right, I heard eight cranks. Let me go check, see what the compression is on number one. My pressure on number one looks about 140 PSI. The motor's cold. That's too high for a misfire. So let's check number two. So I'm gonna move this compression gauge over to number two. All right, so I relieved the pressure off the gauge, screwed it in number two. Now I'm gonna go crank number two. Okay, I cranked this one around eight times. And man, I don't have no pressure on it. So it's got either a bad piston or a bad valve. No pressure bled off. Now, if you want to check it, a piston issue or a valve issue, what you can do is unscrew the compression gauge, pour about an ounce shot glass full of oil down there, wait 30 seconds, and then recheck it. So let me go ahead and do that. It's an oil cap. I'm going to take this oil pour it down in that cylinder and let that sit for about a minute and I'm going to screw the compression gauge back in check compression again see if it goes up I could also do the same thing to number one to see if my compression on number one goes up and that'll let you know if your pistons are worn or a sleeve is stuck or something like that your compression should jump up if you have a piston problem but it'll stay down if it's got a valve problem Okay, I went inside, cranked it eight times. I still have like no compression on number two. So that one is definitely a valve issue from my opinion. If it was a piston problem, normally you can hear uh, piston issues, especially if you got a thrown rod or something. It'll be real loud and, and noisy. So I'm going to go ahead and check number one, see if the compression get higher by adding a little oil down that cylinder. Okay, after adding oil to that number one, as you can see, it's up to like 165 now. So 165 is acceptable if it's, uh, you know, just hot, dry thing. This is a wet test. It should have been 185. So the motor's a little worn, even though the uh, compression's okay in number one. Now, another reason to have low compression is if there's a bad head gasket. Head gaskets normally don't go bad unless the vehicle's been overheated or run out of coolant. And in those cases, a lot of times you'll see compression between 30 PSI and 90 PSI. And you'll often see your spark plug wet with coolant. Okay, I, I checked fuel a little bit by seeing fuel on the spark plug. I checked spark, it was getting spark. I checked compression, compression's low. So my diagnostics for this one is that it's got a burnt valve because there's just no compression in number two cylinder. Now, that's bad because you basically have to do a head gasket job to get at the valve to replace it. So this motor needs to be rebuilt, basically rebuilt the motor or doing a head gasket job, which is expensive, runs between $1,500 and $3,500 depending on where you get it done at.
and how much of it you want done. Now, you can drive a car on a burnt valve, but I recommend that you disconnect the fuel injector so that you're not spraying fuel in there and unburnt fuel is not going down the exhaust and destroying the catalytic converter. So, I did all the tests. If you got any questions, uh, go ahead and post them and me or somebody else will answer them the best we can. Hopefully your situation is a lot more simpler than a, a valve or a blown head gasket. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here, and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.